Hey, welcome to another edition of Kyle Meredith with it's the interview series presented by WFPK at WFPK.org, Consequence and the Consequence Podcast Network. Thank you, as always, for making your way here for checking out the series. You know what to do. If you like what you see, what you hear, hit that subscribe button. I put out three new interviews every single week, so it's a great way to keep up with all of your favorite artists. I could not be more honored and excited to be talking to one of my all-time favorite artists. John Waters is here. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm uh, I'm okay today. Uh, very uh. excited to talk to you. You're back. You're doing your things. You're you're, you're staying busy. I I should just say I was just in uh, I was just in L. A. I got to see that great exhibits that they, oh, had. they did. The Academy did a wonderful. Imagine that the Academy Awards gave me you know eleven rooms of stuff in a gift shop that sold T-shirts and said he'll make you sick. How did that ever happen? <laughs> How did that ever happen? Huh? I don't know. It is amazing. I was astonished the entire year I did stuff for them. They were great curators. They were all for it. But it is amazing. That just proves to anybody that's a kid starting out when everybody says everything they do is terrible. Don't listen. You know, just keep going. If you can last and and keep a sense of humor about yourself, that's very important that they come around and they accept it later. And they do. Well, you make good pieces of arts. And, well, and, and it you. finally starts to be seen by the right people. I, I will say I was with my son, who I, I don't think had been completely introduced to you. Uh, like he yeah. said, he had, had your name in his head. He saw all of that. That So that was his introduction to you, was that exhibit, yeah. and went home and immediately started kind of like searching things out. So, Well, how old is he? Uh, he's He just turned 17. Okay, so that's illegal to have him <laughs> see some of those movies. You better be careful. <laughs> I remember they arrest, I think I saw they arrest parents that. for that today. When I was young, parents called the police when their kids had it. Today, people said, my parents took me to Pink Flamingos. I thought, they did? My parents paid for the movie. I paid them back, and they never saw it. Yeah, wow. Yeah. Well, I the saw... reason is, who wants to sit with their kid and watch Pink no, Flamingos? That, no, that's what I was going to no. say. I saw stuff that I was definitely maybe too young to see, but I saw it on my own. I definitely did not see it with my parents. Yeah. And and as my son has grown up, you know, it's like, I know he's going to watch stuff, but see it. It's, you know, it's all art in some direction. I just don't want to be in the room when it happens. Yeah. Even when I do my shows like this Christmas show, my brothers and sisters used to say, I'm not sitting next to mom when you say that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I I don't blame them. I don't. <laughs> well, let's, let's talk about this. You've been doing this Christmas tour for a while. Uh, I see you are going to come close to me in, uh, in, uh, in, from Louisville here in Cincinnati on uh, yeah. December 14th, but you're going on. Two over shows. I got two in Cincinnati, 13 and 14. Oh, nice. Okay. But you've been doing this for well, well over decades. a decade. Now. Decades, Hello? longer than that. Yeah. And even before that, I do another spoken word show all year that's not a Christmas show. Mm -hmm. The one, the new one now is called The Naked Truth, but it's been called many things. But I rewrite the shows once a year, completely new material. That's like writing a little book every year. And plus I have to memorize it. That's the that's that's the hard part. I've written the new Christmas show. I start memorizing it Monday. Yeah, when did you start writing this one? This one, I started writing it at the end of the summer because I have to write, first of all, the the new show that I do all year that's now called The Naked Truth. And I preview that at the John Waters Summer Camp that we have every year where people come and live as my characters for four days in Connecticut. Then I did it in Minneapolis Halloween show for the first time. But then that part of that becomes the Christmas show. And so I have to unmemorize one and memorize the new one. So... It is, a, yeah, and if it was 70 minutes of someone else wrote it, I could never memorize it, even right. when I'm in movies. I'm not great at memorizing lines. But if you write it, it's a little easier to memorize, definitely. Yeah, you were there. So that's it. So writing something every year and this being the Christmas show, like like at this point, where are you going to mine for details? Are you still going back? Like, do you have that many stories back in your life? Or how does it work? Well, these are new stories. These are advice about, like, okay. how to talk dirty with just Christmas words. You know, I, I have to come up with a different Christmas jokes all year. And I think of stuff whenever I see things. And you can turn a lot of good punchlines into a Christmas punchline. Uh -huh. You just have bad little boy lists or good little thems or, you know, knocking the Christmas tree over can stand for a lot of different rebel activities. <laughs> it's that old joke, If you, as long as you say, you know what I mean, right? Afterwards... No, I don't say that. What I hate the most, window. what I hate the most now is newscasters that say, look... We are looking. We're watching you. I hate they say that. Look. Trump's ahead. Look, we are looking. Please yeah. stop saying look. They all say it now. Yeah. Look, that is coming. 
Yeah, right, right, right. So, the, so now I'm going to ask one of the obvious questions. I'm sure this has come up, but but what is it about Christmas that's kept you coming back this whole time? Like, why is that such a rich holiday, uh, but but really a subject that you can mine over and over? What is it about Christmas? Because people fear it, people love it, period. People hate it, people have anxiety about it. And my show covers all that, no matter what you, even if you're non-Christian. And then you think, why do I have to listen to Silent Night? I don't blame them for being angry, you know? Um, but at the same time, I am traditional about it. I, it's my turn to have a family Christmas dinner at my house. And it's very traditional. But it's sort of traditional. I mean, at the same time, I don't have a tree. I decorate the electric chair that was in female trouble. But it's a tradition in my house. All my aunts, all my nieces and nephews, they all say, I'm not staying in your house, though. It's too scary. They all say that because I have characters from Chucky in the living room and stuff that I was in the Chucky movie. And the little kids get scared of that some. But I'm the crazy uncle. Sure. <laughs> but they like that. They like that. I bring them all the swag and stuff, but I have to be careful because I don't realize that I've given an eight-year-old a bossy bottom t-shirt. <laughs> I'm not really surprised, you know, at the Christmas thing, because when I do look back at your work and, and the way you've always put that mirror on that, that wholesome, sometimes Rockwellian view, yeah. you know, that people have, like, it feels like Christmas really does work the best, especially in that context, that narrative is if that's. Well, yeah, and definitely. I mean, the scene where Divine knocks the Christmas tree over on her mother in female trouble has become a classic. It shows at Christmas all the time. And many people from doing the Christmas store have told me about that Christmas tree falling over. It happens a lot. It's usually the dog or liquor is involved with the mother. So, uh, but one, but I hear all the stories. It happens a lot. So I think a really punk rock thing would be to have it. So you purposely open your last big present and it's rigged. So it falls over on the whole family and everybody screams. <laughs> you can turn bad things into a tradition or have a Christmas, have a Christmas where you purposely give everyone a present, you know, they'd hate. Mm -hmm. That can really be fun. We did it one year. People gave me all the soundtracks to the Rocky movies. <laughs> And did you listen to him? No, I threw him out the window and I lived in a high rise then. <laughs> it was probably not very responsible. Uh, but it makes for a good story. And so maybe <laughs> somebody ended up with those if they didn't crack on the way down. You know. Well, no, if they didn't die from getting hit with them. You don't throw things out of because I, I was younger then and more reckless. Yeah. <laughs> Well, and, and that's a good segue because you've recorded two songs. Well, you, you, you've recorded two recordings, I should say. Uh, one of them is a song that I'll ask about with the uh, singing dogs. But since you already mentioned it, uh, it's a punk rock Christmas. That's the other side. That's the spoken word thing, which you can gather around the tree with your punk rock family and listen every year. It's like, you know, going to grandma's house or the 12 days of Christmas, a punk rock Christmas. But then if you want your guests to leave, you just play, I cover the barking dog singing Jingle Bells, the most hated Christmas song. I feel like Cat Power covering Bob Dylan. Uh, <laughs> I usually have that poster behind me on my other set. That's hilarious that you specifically said Cat Power covering Bob Dylan. It's a I have great album. She album. did a great job. Yeah, yeah, I think she did a great job. Yeah. But so this is a song that everyone hates. However, it's a huge hit song. It plays on the radio every year and people lunge to change the channel. It's really obnoxious. So I just want, and it even says on the cover of the record, please do not play this record. I've never seen that on a record. Is that your, please barking? don't play it. Yeah. 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 Is that you barking? Arf, arf, arf. Yes. I can do it live in person <laughs> anywhere. I don't even need karaoke. <laughs> Uh, that's great but it, uh, like i don't know like he here's what i want to do right um this is fun obviously this is a very fun thing but this is also some high art happening is well, the way i see it um, i i always when anybody says to me and i meet him i say what do you do they say i'm an artist i think really i'll be the judge of that <laughs> history will be the judge of that so um i never say i'm an artist but certainly if you want to call it that I, i'm happy I call it my, my, 
my brand, you know, is I'm always putting out humorous things. Like, I don't expect anybody really to play this record, but it's nice to have it. You'll sleep better if you own it and it's sitting in your record collection somewhere. And you can get it on Sub Pop. Uh, yeah, which... they did some other records I did too. Yeah, yeah, they did. I covered It's in the Book, which was a 50s novelty song that was number one that very few people remember. Uh, and I did Prayer to Pasolini, where I went to the, where he was murdered and spoke in tongues. Mm -hmm. It's, it's you know, they're obscure. They're, they're zooming to the bottom of the charts. <laughs> but when I think of, especially your affinity with Warhol in the early days and, you know, the cans and the silver, whatever, what, what, like this fits in that category to me. Am I going to well, play it? Yeah, I'm going to play it every once in a while. I'm and about, a, about a, once in a while. Uh, well, Andy invented branding almost, you know, sure. he he uh, and he offered at one point to to pay for female trouble. But I said, no, because it would have been Andy Warhol's female trouble. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was lovely. He said that nobody else was offering. But uh, no, of course, Andy influenced everybody to this day. That's why I wrote a chapter in one of my books of sticking up for him. Why is he the villain now in books and movies? We would have never heard of these other people without him. And now they're all saying, oh, he didn't think of anything. He was autistic or whatever. Uh, no, he wasn't. He was a really good artist. The only person that did everything before him was, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I'll, I'll say Andy did everything first, pretty much. <laughs> I and I, I agree with you. I can believe that too. It's uh that's worthwhile. But that's but that's and and not to harp on this too much. But like when I think of your branding, as you're saying, and the expectations that some fans might have when you're coming out with anything, whether it's the, you know, the stage show or, or something like this, you know, one of the movies or whatever. <clears throat> like there is that expectation of, of what you provide. How is, is it just natural for you? Do you lean into it because of those expectations? Do you even put that much thought into it? Yeah, I put a thought into it, but it's parroting mm -hmm. branding. You know, who would put that out? I mean, I have like, I don't think I can say it on the radio. You can, can say I? anything on this. On this, I have a cum rag that's come out. The, all right, there's the the first celebrity cum rag I have. It's out now. Came out at Christmas. Got my oh picture my on it. I don't think there's another one. <laughs> I can't. No even dude know. wiped. I know what I'm getting my mom for the Christmas that uh, present that nobody wants. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> After you give her the the DVD to the director's cut of Irreversible. Right. <laughs> and by the way, here's John Waters come rag. Enjoy. Yeah. Enjoy. <laughs> but you still get away from that. And I think that the point I was getting to is like, I remember growing up and that was pre-internet days. And because of the silos that we were in and, and the mystery that existed and this stuff, you know, became legendary hilarity. And when I think that that doesn't exist anymore because of, of, of how, Pop art has really, you know, for a lot of times caught up with with what you and, and what Andy was doing and stuff like that. Yet you still find a way to do it with your own celebrity cum rag. Well, uh, I think, yeah. And at the same time, though, because it used to be if you lived, if you didn't live in New York or San Francisco or, New, or L.A., you couldn't see anything. You have, but now with the Internet, you don't. I always tell people, don't leave where you're born, no matter where it is. Just make it better there. Yeah. And that would make America so great. Yeah. 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 Because it is. I mean, with the, everybody starts moving, everybody starts leaving. We, we lose the localness of a lot of people. The scenes, I, I, maybe I can't tell if it's that I'm older, but I don't see them anymore. But it feels like the scenes are gone in the same the way. local color has, has vanished. Definitely. Right. And, right. and even in Baltimore, all the dive bars I wrote about in one of my books, they're all gone. Right. Every location for Pecker is gone. Uh, it's yeah, it's a different, it's a different world, but you know, we adapt to it and we do an, a whole new version of it. You have to just keep going. I hate people to say it was better when I was young. That just means you're an old fart. Right. And then I was and trying not to know say what that means. You don't time. know what's going on now. Exactly. Yeah. That's, that's where I was trying not to get to. It's like, I don't yeah. see it. I don't know if it's me or if it's real, you know, but, but you need youth spies. <laughs> Everybody needs several use buys. It's a position that's always open at my office. So I got that kid hanging around me. Yeah. <laughs> but I feel like that's, you know, there's a, like, a Punk Rock Christmas, this this B, this B side, your spoken word thing. Like, it is a fun, very fun bit of wordplay. But on that second level, you know, that, that high art that I'm talking about, like, when you say, why are punks not part of the new diversity? 
like that's the moment when I feel like, and especially in the stuff that we're talking about too, you know, when things change and you try to meet the moments, but there are like, I don't, I, I'm not going to try to put words in your mouth. Like what does that line mean? That means like the same thing I say that we could chant punk lives don't matter. You know, to have, to have a diversity outsider thing that doesn't want to be included, but still is that punks are never mentioned in diversity. I think there should be a punk rock first lady. They should be a punk rock met ball. There should be a punk rock everything. And it's easy to imagine that. It's easy to imagine it. And it usually is good because you don't need money to be a punk. You need nerve. And it, but it's also become uh, couture, you know. Yes, well, couture is always based on on the young people that get some. You want to be really famous, really stylish. You go to the thrift shop when you're 17 and buy the one thing that no one has ever bought, even in the thrift shop, and start wearing it, and you start a trend. Yeah. Don't buy designer clothes when you're young. You need it. My age, I pay a lot of money to look poor. <laughs> That's a good line right there. Oh, and it's Dolly Parton's line. She paid a lot of money to look this trashy, she said. Uh -huh. Looking poor is different. Like, the clothes I buy have holes in it and stains and everything on purpose. And my dry cleaner, always when I take them in for the first time, said, I didn't do this. I say, I know. I know. I paid a lot for that. Don't take that stain out. I had her on the show earlier this year, and she said that. She said a, a version of that line. She goes, I, I I I wanted to look trashy. I didn't want to be trashy, but I just yeah. wanted to look trashy. I always said if she got out of drag and played a junkie, she'd win the Oscar in one second. <laughs> I wish she'd take you up on that. Uh, it's not too she'd late. Be great. Yeah. But I know people that know her. She's never out of drag. She sleeps like that, I think. Good not for her. Yeah. No. no one dislikes Dolly Parton. No one dislikes her. No, that's her. what I mean. No one dislikes her. That is an amazing thing. And she's fairly extreme looking. True, true. But everybody loves her and she's got a heart of gold. At least. Yeah. And, and, she's, and she can cuss like a sailor at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. All the best qualities. Um, real quick, I also want to ask, um, so so the record's out, so everybody should get that. And the Christmas I think it's out tomorrow, the 7th. Well, right. yeah. I don't Which know this will air. I mean, this will post okay, a little yeah. later, but yeah. And the Christmas tour... And uh, it's been a long time since you've done with movies, but there was also that always that rumor about, uh, was it Liar Mouth? Was yeah, that well, it was going to happen. They optioned the book. I wrote the script. They loved it. RB Plaza wanted to star in it, and then nobody gave us the budget. So it might get made one day. It's not getting made right now. All, but you're just waiting on the budget. Somebody to say, here's oh, the money. They all said no. So we're, we don't have anybody to wait for right now. But things change. People run studios. They change every six months. Yeah, so do. we'll see. Yeah. I got plenty of jobs. I got plenty of jobs. Yeah, I hope that comes to fruition. I would love me to. Too. Me too. Me yeah. too. Yeah. And in the meantime, I, I just, I, I'll end by saying I, I had a really good time. I went back and watched Serial Mom because it's 30th anniversary year of that one. Hadn't watched that in a bit. What a brilliant movie. That's uh, my best movie. That's my best movie, definitely. And Kathleen's so great in it. And so and uh, no, it's, it's, it's definitely my best movie. We had the most budget. We had... I mean, I don't know. It just worked. It was like before OJ, but it kind of feels like it was predicting that, and certainly. And uh, so, yeah, I'm real proud of that movie. Thank you for liking. Yeah, love seeing L7 on there. Had never realized that was Patty Hearst in the in oh, the yeah. And, uh, yeah, Patty Hearst. Yeah, and she had the white shoes and the note were in the Academy show and everything. I'm yeah. still. It's the only thing I'm right wing on is you can't wear white shoes after like. I mean, it really is a fashion sin. The, what is the uh, the great line from 30 Rock, the Alec Baldwin line? It's a, uh, why are you in a tux? It's after six o'clock. What am I, a farmer? <laughs> no. You should have standards. Yeah, I, I mean, well, there's other things. You're not supposed to wear velvet before Thanksgiving. You're not supposed to wear patent leather before Easter. There's all sorts of, you can really get down to it. Yeah. Mm. And I believe in all of it. I love that. And that's what one of the many things we love about you. Um, Thank you very much. Uh, I cannot wait to see you out on this tour again, John. Burf, burf, burf. <laughs> I'm really happy I got a, I got my own version of that one right there, too. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time to talk. Seriously, thanks for having pleasure. me. All right. Bye bye. And thanks to my guest. Also, thanks to you. For, uh, for checking out the episode in the series. Before you get out of here, hit that subscribe button. Again, uh, you get three brand new interviews every single week. New one every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. 
at uh, right here on YouTube or, of course, anywhere in podcast land, including iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Podchaser, NPR, or WFPK.org as well. A great way to keep up with your favorite artists and discover new ones as well. Then after that, actually head over to WFPK.org. That's where I do a show, Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern. It's an hour full of song premieres, music news, anniversary spins, bonus interviews, Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern at WFPK.org. Consequence has your music and film news. You can also find me on the social media spots, uh, Facebook, Instagram, mostly on Twitter. All three of them, the address is at Kyle Meredith. Do hope you like and follow along. That does it for another edition. I'm Kyle Meredith. I'll see you next time.